On August 5, 1857, a 4,300 kilometer long cable was laid across the Atlantic Ocean. It provided a link between Britain and the Americas, further strengthening their social and economic alliances. It was hoped to bring perpetual peace and friendship between kindred nations. Now information could be represented as a pattern of electrical pulses and sent across the world almost instantaneously. Stock tickers and money transfers were commercial applications invented by Western Union, who owned an extensive Stand network. by for this announcement. Germany has invaded Poland and has bombed many tons. General mobilization has been ordered in Britain and France. And then consequently, this country is at war with Germany. Not the world, which is the real cause of the war that today threatens the freedom of mankind. <laughs> The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. During World War II, Germany, Italy, and Japan were far outnumbered by the Allies. Their only conceivable path to victory was the ability to launch widespread surprise attacks. So it was necessary to issue commands encrypted with the strongest possible cipher. The goal of encryption was to automate the one-time pad using an encryption machine. Ideally, this machine would accept an input letter, apply a random shift, and output the encrypted letter. However, this requires a machine that can automate a random sequence. All machines follow the same principle. They begin in some initial configuration known as a state. They accept input, do some operation with the input, and display the output. The operation from the initial state to final state is always predictable and repeatable. Machines cannot roll dice. What machines can do, however, is produce a pseudo-random sequence of numbers. Think of this as fake randomness, a repeatable sequence of random-looking numbers. It will look random if at every point in the sequence you are unable to predict the next number. It's vital that this sequence never repeat but mechanical procedures are repetitive by nature. So the goal was to produce a sequence which took a long time to repeat. Therefore, Alice and Bob could generate an identical pseudo-random sequence as follows. First, they share identical machines. Next, they agree on a random initial position, which is defined as the key setting. They align their machines to the same position. And finally, cycle through the identical operations to achieve identical sequences. However, this requires the initial condition to be a truly random choice. We are familiar with the mechanical process of an odometer, which takes a long time to repeat its cycle. Imagine we scrambled the numbers on the wheels of an odometer. When it ticks forward, a new shift is generated by adding up the numbers on each rotor. This is the idea behind rotor encryption machines. For example, the message Attack Northwest would be encrypted as follows. Notice how a new shift is used at each position in the message. With three wheels, each with 26 numbers, the length of the sequence before repeating is 26 times 26 times 26. This is equivalent to having a pseudo-random list of shifts 17,576 numbers long. Each rotor position is equivalent to a location in this sequence. The initial machine state is known as a key setting. The collection of all possible key settings defines a key space. This key space increases if the number of ways to initially configure the machine increases. For example, if the rotors can be rearranged, the order can be selected in six ways. Now let's visualize the key space of this machine. First we can choose from one of six possible orderings. Then we can select an initial position from the rotor sequence. This gives us a key space with over 100,000 key settings. Realize that every machine configuration is a point in this space. When we select a key setting, we are selecting a starting point in this space 
which determines the rest of the sequence. Give away the key setting and you give away the sequence. The security of rotor machines depends on both the size of the key space and the randomness of the key setting. During World War II, one of the important technologies used by the German military was known as the Enigma. It was an electromechanical rotor machine invented by a German engineer at the end of World War I. Each rotor wheel had electrical contacts on either side with a maze of wirings within. At each rotor position, there was an electrical path from the input letter to the output letter. When the rotor advanced, an entirely new path was defined for each letter. During the war, they continually increased the key space of the Enigma in order to make it stronger. This gave them more confidence in the security of their machine. Some changes they made were to add a fourth rotor wheel and increase the number of possible rotors you could put into the machine to 60. This had the effect of massively increasing the key space. Near the end of the war, the Enigma could be set up in over 150 million 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 ways. Guessing what key setting was used for a given message would be approximately as likely as guessing the outcome of 26 dice rolls. This gave the Germans confidence that the Allies, even if they had a copy of the Enigma, could never check all possible key settings. For two parties to communicate using the Enigma, it required that they first share the daily key settings. This allows them to align their machines in the same position. This protocol changed over the war, but generally involved distributing key sheets in advance to all operators. Each day, the operator would cut off the daily settings. This would tell them the daily configuration of the machine, such as what rotors to use and the order of the rotors. Then the setting was to be destroyed after use. However, one vital step was left to the operator. They were to select a random initial position of each rotor before communication began. And a simple mistake was made by some fatigued operators. We make the same mistake when we set a bike lock combination because we tend to rotate the cylinders only a few clicks from the initial state or we reuse a common password. This altered the uniform distribution of each initial rotor position. Repetition is fatal. The second major error was a design error, not a procedural one. The Enigma was designed so that an input letter would never encrypt to itself. So given an encrypted letter such as L, you can eliminate the possibility of L being the original letter, which also alters the frequency distribution away from uniform. These mistakes add up to larger and larger differentials in the frequency distribution. This differential is the cause of information leak, because it allows you to eliminate possible settings, thus shrinking the key space. This weakness led to a code-breaking machine, initially designed by the Poles and later improved by the British-American effort. The bomb was multiple Enigma rotors chained together allowing it to rapidly test different key settings. For a given message, it could scan through all rotor positions and orders to find possible matches in a matter of minutes. This machine allowed the Allies to read German commands within hours of them being issued. It was a fatal blow to their strategy as the Allies could anticipate their next moves. One fact remains. This initial attempt at generating pseudo-randomness failed. If the operators had instead rolled dice to decide their initial rotor positions, the starting point in the sequence would have been uniformly distributed. This would have required the Allies to check the entire key space, which was impossible even with the fastest computer. Repetition reduced the key space. Otherwise, the outcome of World War II could have been drastically different.